Climate change is a change in the usual weather found in a place. This could be a change on how much rain usually gets in a year. Or it could be a change in the place's usual temperature for a month or a season. Climate change is also a change in the Earth's climate. This could be a change in Earth's usual temperature. Or it could be a change where rain and snow usually fall on Earth. Weather can change in just a few hours. However, climate takes hundreds or even a millions of years to change. What is causing Earth's climate to change? First is the natural processes. Second is the human activities. So there are only two that is causing Earth's climate to change. So let's proceed for the natural processes. And here there are three components. First is the orbital changes. Second is the volcanic activities. Third is the solar output. So in the natural processes, we don't have much to worry about this because we don't have a choice but to suck it up because, because it is a naturally occurring that can cause global warming. Okay, so we cannot control it unlike human activities. Okay, so let's talk about for the first component which is the orbital changes. In here, we all know that the Earth has its own naturally warming and cooling period caused by Milankovitch cycle according to Wobble, Rolls, and Stretch Theory. Milankovitch cycle is like the variation of the tiltness of the Earth that orbits around the Shan. So scientists have observed that our climate is changing based on the tiltness of the Earth that orbits around the Sun. Maybe it varies if it, whether it could be warmer or a cooling uh, global warming. So, second is the volcanic activity. So, um, during volcanic eruption, we all know that the carbon dioxide is released into our atmosphere. Um, we all know that carbon dioxide substance that is toxic, but it can also be a food to our trees. So, of course, too much carbon dioxide is too bad, okay? So, it can cause global warming. But we do, as I have said, we don't have much to worry about this because volcanic activities is rarely happening. So last is the solar output. So there can be a fluctuation of the amount of radiation from the sun. So high amount of radiation that is emitted by the earth from the sun can cause global warming. Okay, So scientists cannot trace if could have a higher solar output because it is outside our earth. We don't know how will the sun will increase its solar output or decrease. So let's proceed for the human activities. Other than natural processes, there's also human activities that causes the Earth's climate to change. Human activities such as burning of fossil fuels, coal, gas, and oil, this releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Fossil fuels are called non-renewable resources once they are used up, they will be gone forever. The use of fossil fuels harms the environment as well. When petroleum and coal burn, they release harmful gases. These gases react with moisture to create acid rain, a dangerous form of pollution. Burning fossil fuels also increases the temperature of the Earth's atmosphere. Next is deforestation. Trees absorb carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. If they are cut down, there will be higher amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Deforestation is the permanent removal of trees to make way for something other than the forest. This could include clearing the land for agriculture or grazing or using the wood for fuel, construction or manufacture. Forests cover more than 30% of the Earth's land surface. It is according to the World Wildlife Fund. Dumping waste in landfill. A landfill site, also known as a tip, dump, rubbish dump, garbage dump, or dumping ground is a site for the disposal of waste materials. A landfill is the oldest and most common form of waste disposal. Although the systematic burial of the waste with daily, intermediate, and final covers only began in the 1940s. When the waste decomposes, it produces methane. So what is methane? Methane is a substance that contributes in making the earth warmer. 
Agriculture Agricultural practices lead to the release of nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere. So what is nitrogen oxide? Nitrogen oxide contributed in the greenhouse effect and global warming. Land use changes can also significantly contribute to climate change. Large-scale changes such as deforestation, soil erosion, or machine-intensive farming methods may all contribute to increased carbon concentration in the atmosphere. Soil erosion by water, wind, and tillage affects both agriculture and the natural environment. The contribution of farm animals to global greenhouse gas is quite significant. Methane emission per animal per year, western cattle 120 kg, non-western cattle 60 kg, sheep 8 kg, pig 1.5 kg, human 0.12 kg, poultry 0.015 kg. In total, we have 190 kg of methane which contributed in global warming. What are the effects of climate change? We have effect on environment and effect on humans. For the effect on environment, we have the glacier tree. Over the past 50 to 100 years, photographic evidence has shown that the word glaciers has been melting, which has caused them to retreat. The Muir Glacier has retreated over 50 kilometers since observation began in 1893. The rise in global temperature is causing glaciers to disappear and is increasing the melting of sea ice in the Arctic. Arctic sea ice is disappearing at the rate of 10% every decade. The extent was lowest in the satellite record in 2012. Another is ice cores. Scientists often use ice cores to detect changes in temperature. When snow falls, it traps air into the ice. When scientists take a core of ice, it reveals the carbon dioxide and methane concentrations at the time the snow fell. They believe there is a close link between the amount of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and global temperatures. Layers of accumulation and melting of the ice can reveal the temperature of each year for the past 400,000 years. According to the scientists studying the ice cores, there is a clear evidence of a rapid increase in temperature these past decades. The early spring. In recent years, there have been signs of a seasonal shift. The spring arrives earlier and winters tend to be less severe. These seasonal changes affect the nesting and migration patterns of wildlife. Another is the rising of sea levels. Sea level can rise by two different mechanisms with respect to climate change. First, as the oceans warm due to an increasing global temperature, sea water expands, taking up more space in the ocean basin and causing a rise in water level. The second mechanism is the melting of ice over land which then adds water to the ocean. Between 1901 and 2010, average sea level rose by 0.19 meters. Effects on human and animals As temperature change, many species are on the move. Some butterflies, foxes, and alpine plants have migrated farther north or to higher cooler areas. Precipitation, rain, and snowfall has increased across the globe on average. Yet, some regions are experiencing more severe drought, increasing the risk of wildfires, lost crops, and drinking water shortage. Some species, including mosquitoes, ticks, jellyfish, and crab pests are thriving. Booming population of bark beetles that feed on spruce and pine trees, for example, have devastated millions of forest acres in the U.S. Less fresh water will be available since the glacier is stored for about three quarters of the world's fresh water. 
Some diseases will spread such as mosquito-borne malaria and there might be a resurgence of the 2016 Zika virus. Ecosystem will continue to change. Salmon species will move farther north or become more successful. Others such as polar bears won't be able to adapt and could become extinct. And for the summary of the impact of climate change, we have sea level rise will affect 18 million people, tropical storm will increase in magnitude, the species in affected area like um, Arctic may, be, may become extinct, diseases such as malaria increases, and additional of 280 million people may be affected. So let's move on on how to manage the impact of climate change. In managing the impact of climate change, there are two strategies, the mitigation and adaptation strategies. First, let's discuss the mitigation strategy. Mitigation means to reduce or prevent the effect of something that is happening. Mitigation strategies for global warming include alternative energy, carbon capture, planting trees, and international agreements. Alternative energy. Using alternative energy like solar, wind, or tidal energy can reduce the use of fossil fuels. This reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because fossil fuels is one of the biggest contributors of carbon dioxide. Carbon capture. Carbon capture means the removal of carbon dioxide from the waste gases from power station and then the storage of it in old oil and gas field or coal mines underground. This reduces the amount of emission in the atmosphere. Planting trees or encouraging a forest station means that there will be more trees to absorb the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere during the photosynthesis. Lastly, the international agreement. In in 2005, the Kyoto Protocol became the international law. Kyoto Protocol is an international agreement that limits the world in emitting greenhouse gases. The countries that signed the agreement pledged to reduce their carbon emission by 5%. However, it ran out in 2012 and the overall impact has been small. The U.S. refused to join and the newly industrialized countries like China and India are not required to make any reductions. Let's move on to adaptation strategies. Adaptation strategies do not aim to stop or reduce the global warming. Instead, they aim to respond to climate change by limiting its negative effect. Strategies includes in agriculture, water supply, and reducing the risk of sea level rise. In agriculture, farmers will have to adapt that some crops may not be able to grow in warmer climate. However, some crops like oranges and grapes will be able to grow. About the water supply, water transfer scheme can be used. This is where the water will be transferred from the area where there is a lot of water to the area where there is a water shortage. Reducing the risk of sea level rise, areas that is at risk of sea level rise can use the sea defenses to protect the land to be eroded away. That's all for how to manage the impact of climate change.